Welcome back. In the last video, I showed you how to do cross-validation using the cross-validate model method from uh, the class evaluation. Uh, two things I'd like you to notice from the last video when we did cross-validation that we didn't actually need to build the classifier before, before using the cross-validation because as you know, cross-validation works by splitting the data set into two parts, one for training, one for testing, and then uh, it automatically builds you know, in the background builds the model on the training part and then test it on the test part the second thing is when we provided the data set uh, let me actually show you the code when we provided the data set for, for the cross validation where is it? Yeah, um, yes here we should provide the training set which is data set not test data set so I hope that makes sense in this video I'm going to show you how we can get hold of the phones. So if you remember when we last time uh, visited the evaluation class and then we went to the method um, cross validate model, we uh, mentioned in explanation that it actually performs a stratif does it does stratification of the data if the class is nominal and it performs cross validation for a classifier on the on a set of instances and it also says it performs a deep copy of the classifier before each call to the build classifier just in case the classifier is not initialized properly now a few things that i'd like you to notice what we're going to do now is we're going to try and write our own code to do a similar thing but we're going to get hold of the folds as we said notice that i'm going to show you how you can randomize your data how you can do stratification and i'm not going to do a deep copy of the classifier because i know for sure that my classifier will be initialized properly you will see this in the code anyway so let's go to the code and see what we're doing here we're importing as usual the required classes uh, i'm building uh, i'm sorry it's actually this one here folds rather than the evaluate this is for the last video now i'm importing the required videos i'm using my base this time using the iris as i said it's on my on my desktop and we load this set as usual get the instances object maybe we can call this training data set so we can uh, differentiate between things but we get the we set the class index as usual and then we just cre create the classifier naive base and then we need the seed for uh, the randomization and the number of folds let's say it's 15 or whatever k fold anyway so k times so maybe 10 15 whatever you, 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 you like and then now this is for randomizing the data we create the random seed and then what we do now is by the way yes so now I just create another uh, uh, object of type instances using the data set and I'm going to call it rand data and then we randomize the data using the random seed so this is this step here randomizes the data after that we do stratification now this method here in class instances as i told you before class instances is extremely important and it has a large list of extremely useful functions or methods one of them is called class attribute so if i do here as you know round data dot uh, data dot class attribute it returns an instance of type attribute so attribute so attribute is another extremely important class as the name suggests it represents an attribute so we can do a lot of things in there one of the methods there uh, for the class attribute is we can check there's a method there that checks whether that attribute is actually nominal or not so is nominal it returns true or false so we call it if it's true if the class variable is nominal so it's not numerical not strings not date then we say run data another method now in class instances will stratify and we pass it the false and that's how we do stratification now in fact the code is actually looking now so let me just uh, indent the code as you know control a control i uh, does indent automatic indentation and then if you do what to do formatting control a and then control shift control shift f and it does formatting but let's just cancel it anyway so let's say now what we do is we perform the cross validation by looping you know folds number of times so this is the, the number of folds we chose before 15 and then we create an evaluation object using our randomized data so evaluation 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 and now this is how we get hold of the folds 
we have a very nice two very nice methods in class instances one one is called train cv other one is called test cv so one is for the training for cross validation we pass it the number of folds and the current fold number so n is the current fold number the loop index as you can see and uh, the test now we get the test fold by calling the test cv method we pass it the number of folds and the fold number so if we go to class um, instances which is i think if i still remember in weka.core rather than weka.classifiers so if we go to weka.core then go down then we should find class instances and then in it we have train cv and test cv and train cv where is this test cv and train cv what it does it creates the training set for the fold or for, for one fold of a cross validation on the data set by the way uh, this actually can help us even save the splits now if we want to save the splits uh, to separate files then we can save them as we learned before how to save data so now we have them we have the training part here and the testing part here and we can save them as I mentioned before remember train CV and test CV we pass them the number of folds and the current fold and the, they return us the folds this is how we get hold of the folds after that we build the classifier this is why I'm avoiding doing uh, a deep copy as I mentioned before so we create the classifier explicitly using the training part here and then we call evaluate model using the test part so I, we've seen this in the last video we've seen this here right before we did cross validation we did the normal evaluation with the um, uh, with the uh, with our model and the test data set here we're doing exactly the same thing we create the classifiers in the training set and then um, we do evaluate model using the test set after that we can print out any um, uh, evaluation metrics we want so here I'm, I'm printing out to make strings so this is the confusion matrix and then I'm just printing out the fold number uh, fold n out of so for example 1 out of 15 2 out of 15 and then I'm printing out these metrics that we have seen before let me save and run and show you the output so that I can execute and then show you the output quickly as you can see now confusion matrix for the first fold 1 out of 15 this is the confusion matrix and then these are the metrics and then the second iteration uh, 2 out of 15, third one and so on and so forth, 6, 7, 8, 9 and so on and so forth. So this is how you get hold of the folds. Uh, I must say some of the code here I learned from the wiki spaces page, the wiki, wiki pa uh, page for Weka, but this can be quite useful especially if we want to see the details and maybe save these into you know separate data sets to use them in the future. I'm going to stop here, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.